They've been extinct for millions of years. But thanks to human imagination and a bit of exploitation from pop culture, dinosaurs have made a comeback. They're, uh, they're flocking this way. Most writers and filmmakers will admit their reimagination of dinosaurs isn't especially true to life. And that brings us to our real-life cast of characters in their own real-life adventure. He's ready. Okay. Mark North, 66.84. Mike O'Brien is a graphics designer with the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. As long as you're getting material out of there, yeah, keep scraping it. You need to start getting your gear together and... Dr. James Farlow is a professor of paleontology from Indiana. With a grant from the National Geographic Society, he's brought 21 students and volunteers nearly a thousand miles to sweep, swab, and swelter under the hot summer sun. We're gonna have a great opportunity today to get these recorded in 3D. It's so clear. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it gorgeous? It's awesome. That's just a beautiful shot up there. Oh, yeah. Isn't that cool? Very. That's the payoff for all this work we go through. Ready? If I can get this done and see it out there, a bunch of Google Earth files that people can interact with and plan their trip out here and, you know, know where things are. Did it skip its track? Yeah, I think he's heading that way. Uh, the one immediately by Mike's left hand looks like it's a right. Five, five, four, nine. Each number you hear will become a GPS coordinate that corresponds to a specific dinosaur track. Okay, ready? North, 76.267. The process can be excruciatingly slow, taking hours and sometimes days, depending on how many tracks are being mapped. Sometimes I get bogged down in the mechanics and the details and the drudgery of some of what has to be done to document them. But every once in a while, you sit back and reflect and, and you get that sense of wonder about what it is you are actually seeing when you see footprints made one after another by living dinosaurs. That's as close to seeing a living dinosaur going about its activities as you're going to get. And so that can't help but fire the imagination. After the GPS coordinates are recorded, Mike O'Brien takes a photo of each individual dinosaur track. That's one thing about this, this is not easy. Seems like everything is, is a challenge. And when the photographs, GPS coordinates, and Google Earth files are all combined, the result is this. I've got hundreds of, of photographs I bring all those back here and I'm able to stitch all those photographs together and we got some great photo mosaics of it. The blue tracks are a small sauropod. These red tracks are a pretty big acrocanthosaur and you can see this green line and how all of a sudden he goes from here, here, that's a left foot, right foot, left, and then all of a sudden he turns real hard right here. It, it really tells quite a story, and it's really important to capture it now before it's, before it's gone. What Mike means is the moment the tracks are unearthed, they'll slowly erode away. Now we can preserve a digital file, so they will be able to do a tour of this track site on their computers. But any amount of modern day effort pales compared to what happened at this same site back in 1939. Roland T. Bird was a paleontologist who hit the mother lobe here along the Paluxy River, discovering hundreds of theropod tracks along with the first known evidence of sauropods. But Bird didn't just scientifically document the tracks. He dug up a huge section and hauled it off to museums across the country. Almost overnight, the city of Glenrose became famous throughout the world. 
The following morning, did you see this one we just found? Mike oh. made an incredible find. This, this is probably the deepest theropod track that's come out of the park. We've uncovered a track here that hasn't seen the light of day for 112 million years. I mean, give or take a few million. It's pristine, that's very deep. Well, this thing goes on forever. I think it's probably time to put some water in here, soften it up. Thank you. Oh, I thought this was to drink. <laughs> you can, but I wouldn't. <laughs> I was going, it's lemonade. All right, thank you. For the next day and a half, Mike will work to get every last bit of clay separated from this fossilized theropod track. You may want to back up for this. I'm going to blast that track out. What blows my mind is seeing those individual toes. It just gives you so much more depth of information. If you can email a file or you can post it on a website for everyone to look at, you know, so many opportunities for sharing that information, especially if you're working with colleagues studying dinosaur trackways in other parts of the world. Having all this new technology has really opened some new doors. The remnants of real life dinosaurs may not be visually stimulating like the ones created by special effects artists, but the ones here at Dinosaur Valley State Park have a huge advantage going for them. They were real. Well, if the payoff is not worth the effort, I'm one of the biggest idiots on the planet. So yeah, I think the payoff is worth the effort. As long as those tracks are mapped, imagine how many more trails that'll lead us down and the stories they're gonna tell us. <laughs>